This video is brought to you by Patterson Car Care. Get double the premium detail product for half the price. Head over to pattersoncarcare.com or go to the link in the description below. If I were to ask you as a car enthusiast, what is the most uncool type of car imaginable? And universally, almost everyone would say, the minivan. The minivan represents what many car enthusiasts see as the end of their journey. They had sold their sports car, they had sold their project car, they have to move on with life and be an adult. But what if you have no other option? So what happens when you take a cheap Honda Odyssey and really try to make it your own. Now that I think of it, I haven't really driven a minivan my entire life, so let's see what it's like. Minivan. <laughs> okay, so hear me out. Today we're at a 1995 Honda Odyssey, and why am I reviewing a minivan? Because minivans are basically the bane of every car person's existence. We have this terrible vision that when we get married and have kids or have a girlfriend and have kids or whatever, whatever relationship you're in, that you're gonna get stuck with something like this. Typically something more modern. This is basically the first generation of the Honda Odyssey. We have had cars on my channel that have proven the use what you got mentality. We've done a Toyota Corolla that had rain gutters at side skirts because he couldn't figure out where he could buy side skirts. I did a freaking off-road Corolla. You know, that was ridiculous, lifted and everything. And also we've taken other cars like a Chevy Cruze and everything else. With enough research and enough patience, you can do it. Now you guys might recognize this generation of Odyssey as the same one as the Routacy from the Boosted Boys YouTube channel. And I actually had the opportunity to ride in the Routacy. Routacy, I can never say it right. Routacy, and here's a clip of that. It was ridiculous. <laughs> what they did was threw an H22 in it and then a manual trans conversion because the Odyssey in a lot of ways is just a huge Accord. A lot of the technology is the same, a lot of the motor is the same because the original motor in this is from the F series of engines which they also put in the Honda Accord. And if you look at the taillights, they're almost identical to the Accord wagon. By the way, if anybody wants to build a uh, sleeper Accord wagon with me, please let me know because that sounds really fun. There is so much room <laughs> in this vehicle that I'm not used to. And when you think about it, does a minivan make sense for a big family? Unfortunately, it does. And the reason I say that is, look behind me. It is just seating for everybody, except for this one, because if you put too many people in it, it starts rubbing, which I hear is a problem, because this has wheels and tires on it and BC racing coilovers on an Odyssey. And I asked, oh, what uh, what coilovers did you use? Did you use a cord? Did you use Civic? Did, did you use, I don't know, S2000? I don't know. No, they make <laughs> coilovers for the Honda Odyssey. This is because I'm starting to see more people modify minivans and it's just becoming a trend. I definitely think that Busy Moto had a big part of that. Busy Moto did that newer Odyssey, I believe from 2014 with the J series engine in it and it made, you know, a thousand something horsepower. And people said, oh, minivans can actually be kind of cool. That's pretty neat. The owner of this car picked up this car <laughs> for $1,300 from a flip of a coin. They basically decided the fate of this car by flipping a coin, which I thought was really neat. By getting this car, all they had to do was change the ECU. And after changing the ECU, because the ECU has some problems with it typically, because it's an old computer. Other than that, $300 fix, and you're, you know, ready to rock. But at the same time, the paint was starting to fade. They repainted it, they put a really pretty pearl into it, and they have an aftermarket front lip. So yeah, the front lip for an Odyssey. <laughs> I can't even say that out loud with a straight face. Now, is this car fast? No, are you joking? Come on. I'm sorry to disappoint you. I, I keep stuttering, but I'm sorry to disappoint you if you think this was some sleeper Odyssey video. It's not. It's more so to talk about why it's okay. Why it's okay to take something like this and modify it. Because, think about it, the budget is only 1300 bucks. There's more money 
and the coilovers and the wheels. To, and uh, you know, the paint job was done at home. So the paint job for being done at home looks really nice. And the Pearl came out beautiful. Like, it's so weird because I saw a picture of this and of course the email says, hey, you want to drive the most boring thing ever created? And I said, bet, let's do it. But, but the picture somehow got me. It was like, wow, a modified first gen Odyssey and it actually looks nice. A friend of mine named David Blake has a 1JZ SC and he came out of the car today and said, wow, that minivan's really nice. Whose is that? What car person says that? Almost no one says, man, that's a really sick minivan. Almost never. This Odyssey also came with a four speed automatic that has extremely long gearing. <laughs> The long gearing is due to Honda wanted this thing to be the family commuter. They wanted it to be the no brainer. You know, good gas mileage, automatic transmission, easy to drive, column shifter everybody's used to in the 90s, comfortable seating. I mean, this is the original interior and literally is perfect. Like the dash has no cracks in it like the Nissans do. The seats don't really have too many like tears or rips or anything. You know, the cloth seats are very comfortable. You do sit high in this because it's a minivan, but it feels like you're driving a really big like EK hatch. That's a really good way to put it because you have this giant windshield and all these windows. You can, you guys can see literally everything I see. And that almost never happens during a video review because sports cars, the windows stop right here. Unless you're a Camaro, they're like right here. But does it ride smooth? Yeah, it rides as smooth as it can be, right? Because we're putting coilovers on this. Spring rate in the back is a little, little bouncy, but other than that, the front is really nice. Also, when you buy these cars stock, uh, handling was not their priority. <laughs> when I was a little kid, my parents, had a Ford Windstar. I always felt so empowered as a little kid sitting in the middle front. How would you describe that? The seats right behind me, you know, they're individual seats. I always felt good being the guy, you know, having the armrest. I always felt like I was on an airplane or something. And that's what makes these so comfortable is because you have leg room, you have all the space you need. That's why so many people take vans on road trips. But is it possible to really modify these? It is, absolutely. There's actually aftermarket support for this. I had a friend of mine back in Virginia actually do an H23 swap in one of these with a manual in it. And yeah, it's pretty much all the same parts you'd find from any other Honda. It is just that time period where Honda just used everything because it worked without a paddle. <laughs> Okay, it's not as bad as I expected, to be honest with you. I thought I'd be screaming internally. You know, like the dog, it's fine with the fire around him. Another thing you'll notice is that, going back to my argument that driving this van is basically a giant Accord or EK, is that the steering wheel's the same. The steering wheel is pretty much the same. It's got these, <laughs> the horn buttons. There's a car in front of me and he just like freaked out. <laughs> the horn buttons, it's got, it's got cruise control and for a 95 that's pretty solid not every car had cruise control out there a lot of the times it was a factory option the dashboard is massive and you have plenty of room to put your stuff in there's two glove compartments essentially guys there's no tachometer i just looked down and i was like i wonder what rpm were oh we don't know basically it's one gargantuan speedometer because it's like four speed automatic, you don't really have control over it. But you can go into lower gears with the column shifter, sorry about the rumble strips, but you can go into lower gears with the column shifter. But it's strange if you're not used to that, when you first drive the Odyssey, you know, with an automatic transmission, typically you have D, drive. This says D4, D3, two, and one. So if I just go to one, I'm not gonna floor it or hurt it, but like, now I'm in one. Now I'm trying to get up a mountain and now it hates its life. <laughs> now we're gonna go to two. Whoa. <laughs> and it's so funny because as I'm doing this, I look behind me and it's just like, I'm, there's this bubble that's behind me. I can't run from <laughs> bubble buddy all day long. <laughs> I think they really nailed this Odyssey in particular. Like the front of it actually has a nice look to it. It has that kind of angular style where the hood just goes straight down and 
for a lot of people driving the Odyssey, you know, the entire theory about this vehicle was that anybody could drive in. It's a great vehicle for people to learn how to drive in. Also, it's bigger, so it challenges people to learn how to park easier. But since the hood is so slant nose, you don't even really see it. Like it's it's so far down that when you don't really know where the front bumper is, you can see some people running into stuff. I can totally see why these sold so incredibly well. In the minivan revolution of the 90s, you know, there was the Caravan, then the Windstar, then the Free Star, which was the same thing. All these companies tried to get on that level and keep up with things like the Odyssey. And later they had the J-Series engine, which is a pretty stout engine. And just seeing the evolution of this thing is pretty neat. I can't get over, like, the materials in this thing, there's no like obvious crazy hard plastic. Like it is, but it's textured. So you can't really get that vibe of, wow, this is like really cheap, you know? Like the center is like the only part with the digital clock that's like yay big and you need a magnifying glass to see at the time. But I just can't get over this massive speedo. Like it's so silly. The seat. It's so soft. Like you put your hands against it, you're like, oh yeah, that's the stuff. <laughs> like it's, it's really, really comfortable. And when you go from this to an Integra, or you go from this to a Civic or anything like that, you can tell it's from the same bloodline. But I would definitely like the opportunity to drive like some fast minivan. So if anybody's out there, let me know. But as an overall daily driver to get you around and not look ridiculous, yeah, I think that Wesley pulled off this vehicle. I'm really, really surprised because I wasn't sure how it would look in person that I saw it in person I was like, I'm sold. I could totally drive that every day, no problem. I am not ashamed. Also, another thing is uh, this didn't have the sliding doors yet. This has one massive door in the back, but then you know, eventually they created the sliding doors that every other company had at the time. On that note, honestly, what do you guys think about minivans? That's really all I have to say. I mean, it's one of those things where if you treat it and you know what it is, you understand the purpose of the minivan, as uncool as the concept is, you have to admit they're very useful. All right, so on that note, if you're interested, I have my own detail brand called Patterson Car Care. It is double the detail product for half the price. And I also have a private Discord. I just launched for that dude in blue viewer. So go to the description below if you are interested. But on that note, this was actually a really fun time. I'm really surprised. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys next time and take it easy. You all have a wonderful day. Goodbye.